Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. In today's video, it's all about customizing the colors and the appearance in PreSonus Studio One. Think about this, you're gonna be staring at this screen quite often. Even if you're just a hobbyist, when you're going in to record a session, you need to be looking at something that is gonna be pleasing to the eye. So most of the time, when you're looking at PreSonus Studio One, it's gonna look very much basic, dark mode, and there's not a lot of colors. Even if you're creating a new track and you have it selected on auto color, it doesn't seem to add a bunch of color that much. So you can go in, and I'm gonna show you in this video, it's relatively simple. You can create your own customized style that fits your studio's aesthetic, and it will stay the same with every session that you do. So let's jump into PreSonus Studio One. I'll show you my layout. You can feel free to copy this if you want to, but then you can also tweak the parameters to fit your own visual needs. So first thing I wanna show you in PreSonus Studio One is just how crazy this layout looks. Now this is not necessarily the one that I'm gonna be using, but I wanted to show you something that is drastically different than what is out there in PreSonus Studio One. I'm in the Mix tab, and on the Mix tab, you can see I have all these light blue tracks, I've got a blue track, red, all these fantastic colors that are just in your face. And then when I get to my buses, I've got my effects track that's just kind of grayed out. I've got a few buses over here, but it's much more colorful. And for once, we're seeing this not in dark mode, we're seeing a light mode. Now the light mode is something that I'm kind of favoring at the moment. Not sure if that will stick with me because when we're, often when we're thinking about light and dark mode, you're thinking about, I don't want my eyes to be straining. But my personal use of PreSonus Studio One, I don't find myself staring at the screen for hours and hours and hours. I play the drums in my room, I'm playing guitar, I'm looking away, I'm adjusting a guitar pedal. I don't think this is gonna affect me long-term staring at a screen that's just bright white. It's still got some grayness to it and I can adjust the parameters as we're gonna get to in just a moment. So right off the bat, if you're brand new to PreSonus Studio One and you've just loaded the program, it probably looks more similar to this. This is essentially dark mode and let's work our way up from here. So the first thing you wanna do is hit Control comma at the same time. That's if you're using a Windows machine. I'm pretty sure on the Mac you can hit Command comma and it should bring up the settings menu. If that doesn't work for you, go to Studio One at the top of the screen, then hit Options. From the Options tab, you should have General selected and then click the tab for Appearance. This is where we're going to be doing the majority of our changes. Now, this isn't necessarily going to affect the individual tracks. We're going to get that in just a second. And also the mix window that I was showing you earlier, I'll show you how to change those settings as well. But the first thing you need to notice is the hue shift. Now, by default, it's going to be something rather blue, possibly even in this area. But as I move the tab over, we're more in a pink region. I want you to take a look at all the things that it's changing. So basically the background of our track names start to take on this pinkish tone. It's not gonna be directly pink, but if we move over to red, yellow, and green, as you can see the things that are being affected by that. I actually tend to like this light blue color and especially it's gonna tie in when I switch this thing into light mode. So you may wanna come back to the hue slider and change that around as needed. Then we have saturation. Saturation is how much of the color is making an impact on the screen. As you see, if I move it all the way to the right, things just instantly look like they have sunglasses on, like I'm wearing rose colored sunglasses. If I move this to red, now you can truly see the effects of the hue taking place. Down here at the bottom, where we have our performance meter, where we have the mix, edit, and browse tabs, it's very red. If you have the inspector window open, you can see on the side, a bunch of red in your face. So by default, Studio One is gonna be in the blue region, possibly over here in dark blue territory. I'm gonna move mine all the way to the right where I'm hitting somewhat around 318 or so. I don't need it to be that saturated, so I'm gonna bump this thing down a bit back to maybe 10%. You can also go to the side here if you need to type in specific percentages. Now, luminous, this is where we're switching a bunch of the light and dark mode. So if I move this luminous, ugh, luminance, if I move this all the way to the left, we are not only in dark mode, but as you can see, it's actually harder for me to read. So I don't have 2020 vision with my glasses on, but as you can see, the dark background is about as dark as it's gonna be. And to me, that makes the text look sharper, but also in a way it makes it harder for me 
to see. So if you are going to go dark mode, you may still want to keep it around like negative 50 or so, where you still have more grays and blacks. It's just not all completely blacked out. But if you want to black out everything and you want to go that route, that's totally understandable as well. You can actually be at 0% and it be at both ways. So by default, I believe you're at 0% on the dark mode side. If you switch it to 0% on the light mode, it just instantly, like somebody turned the lights on. This is where I'm going to be hanging out for a while. If you push light mode all the way up, it's truly blinding at this point. This is about as white as paper and you can probably even see on the camera the reflections off of my screen it's just lighting up my face now this might do some damage if you're staring at this long term but i'm going to switch mine back to possibly around the 10 percent mark on the light side for now and of course you can bring up saturation if you want more of that blue coming through now contrast is how much material am i going to be able to see in between the whites and the blacks so if you want to have grays or some more detail in kind of the sharpness territory, you can move your contrast up and down to fit your specific needs. I don't need it to be particularly contrasty, but I'm gonna leave it up at about 50% for now and come back to that later. Now, all of this has been happening in what's referred to as the background. Now we're gonna look at the arrangement. So right behind the menu here, all of these tracks that have been recorded, now we're messing with the background of that. So as I've been adjusting the settings on the side, the main chunk of what you're seeing in Studio One is still relatively dark. So on the luminous, lum I wish I could say that word, luminance, where you move this one up, and as you can see, this gray region behind the tracks we've been recorded is now bright white. And this reminds me of like Audacity, or if you've been using Windows for a while, like MS-DOS, all those kinds. This looks very retro. So if you're wanting to go that route, by all means, go for it. I do like the contrast of my arrangement view being somewhat dark and then all of my settings and plugins around it having some brightness to it. So I'm gonna try that out for a while. Now on contrast, I want you to pay attention to, you can see these vertical lines all amongst and around the audio tracks themselves. So at the top where I have my ruler, where it's telling me where my measures are, you can see this grid that's forming. If you don't have the contrast turned up high enough, you're gonna lose being able to see that grid. So if you don't wanna see those lines, if you don't wanna see the grid, I guess you would say, behind it, then you can just bump down the contrast as much as you like. Me personally, I wanna have more contrast, especially since it's so dark behind it, but that's pretty much where I'm gonna leave it. Now, plugins, it's gonna be referring to the stock plugins from PreSonus Studio One. So if you're using stuff, like I'll show you FabFilter Pro Q3, Fab filter is pretty much gonna stay the same color as whatever the third party is using. But if you're using PreSonus stock plugins, I'll show you in just a second, those actually change with the settings. So if I open up Pro EQ right here, you would say that that is very much a dark mode. If I hit command or excuse me, control comma, if I switch the plugins to light mode, now you can see instead of it being a dark gray, it's kind of more of a aluminum color like you'd see on a MacBook. And then you can also go colored. And when you go colored, it's gonna be reflective of whatever you have the hue shape to be in. I'm gonna switch this thing to light mode because it's not, again, it's not bright white. It's kind of a light gray. And like I was telling you, if you're using any third-party plugins like Pro-Q3, you're just not gonna see, you're not gonna be able to change the way that those look necessarily, just the stock plugins. Now there's one more setting before we get into any of the tracks and buses and that is on the score. So a lot of you out there will probably not be using any of the piano tracks when you're doing MIDI editing. But if I open up the edit window here on the drums, now you can see instead of it being, usually it's on something like this. If you click any of these buttons right here, you kind of have the piano view is what they call it. Then we have the drum view. Drum view comes default when you're using things like Superior Drummer. And then the score view. If you're doing scores and things like that, you can obviously tell that this looks a little bit wonky because even though a lot of the stuff has got a dark background, I am traditionally wanting any of the score stuff to remain a white background with the notes in black. So that's as far as the main settings go. There's a few more settings that obviously you can change. If you go to the Mix tab, 
all of the tracks that you had, even if you've already created them, down at the bottom where we are naming our tracks, if you double click the text area, you can obviously change this instead of it saying base to, I just want it to say base. But if you click any of the colors, around the text, it's gonna bring up your color palette. And of course you can go through and change these to be whatever color you want them to be. Now for all intents and purposes, I do try to be consistent when I'm coloring and arranging my tracks because visually I wanna see where things are. If I'm doing a small session, then this isn't gonna be as big a deal to me. I don't care if my acoustic guitar track is yellow and my vocal is purple. If it's only gonna be three tracks, four tracks, or a minimal mix, I'm not gonna go through and colorize everything as much. But the more tracks you have, the more important it is for you to have some sort of coloring to it. So the way that I'm going about things is pretty much all of my vocals and background vocals are gonna be this light blue color. Anything that's light blue, it could be this one here, it could be the one above it. Light blue is gonna be my vocals. And then working my way down, it's usually drums, like Superior Drummer here is gonna be red. So vocals are light blue, drums are red. Visually, I'm thinking that drums are intense. Usually red, we associate with heat. We're gonna use red for drums, blue for bass. My MIDI instruments, a lot of times those can end up being green if I don't have a lot of electric guitar tracks, but for the sake of this palette, I'm gonna make all my MIDI instruments orange. And then I'm gonna have my electric guitars in green, so guitars are green. And then acoustic guitars are gonna be yellow because I associate that like with the color of wood that my acoustic guitar has. Now my bus tracks, you can also change the bus color. Most of the time these default to just being black you can change this as well. So if I want my reverbs to be green, I can definitely do that. About the, the effects tracks, just where they're located on the mix view, I would prefer just to keep my mix, my effects tracks to be black. That kind of gives me some separation. And then my main buses, like my drums bus is gonna carry the tradition of drums bus is red, vocals buses are light blue, and then I have my music bus, my vocals bus, and my mix bus. These could all be white. They're gonna be the last ones in pretty much all of my mixes. I'm gonna have all my instruments going eventually to my music bus, and then my vocals bus is gonna eventually have all the background vocals. And then my main mix bus, I just have it in white. You can copy that if you want to. There's a few more settings, so like a like you saw at the beginning of the video, there's a lot more color going on. If you've got the mix tab open, look for this little Allen wrench. Isn't that, it's not an Allen wrench, crescent wrench, right? Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I believe it's a crescent wrench. Uh, you're gonna click this button for colorize channel strips. As soon as you do, it's as if it's taking those colors we chose at the bottom and it's just spreading them all over the place. Now. That has affected, of course, most of the mix. I don't know if necessarily I need it to be this way. Uh, it does look kind of overwhelming. So for right now, I'm just gonna leave that one unchecked. And then Colorize Plugin Header, again, is gonna refer to when you're opening, especially stock plugins, you see at the top there, you can see the color of whatever track I'm on. If I go to any of my third-party plugins, this is on my acoustic guitar track, I can see that on the header, I know what track I'm tweaking in LA-2A. If I use the LA-2A on a lot of different tracks, this is definitely gonna be a useful one so I know that I'm on the acoustic guitars LA-2A and not the vocals LA-2A. So for the most part, look for the wrench on the side and you can check off these two boxes if you'd like. Last thing I wanna say is that when you're in the main view on PreSonus Studio One, if you're wanting to have all the color on these tracks, look for the wrench at the top left. As soon as you click that, go down to visibility and there's an option for colorize track controls. As soon as I click that, I can see clearly I've got all of my vocals right here on the left, my drums, my bass, roads. This is a lot less overwhelming than when we were on the mix view. So when I'm on the mix view, I'm okay with this being a lot of gray and my colors at the bottom. There's just enough to let me know that, okay, I know that this is the acoustic guitar. I don't need everything to be colored on this, but in your main session view, you can go ahead and turn this stuff on and mess with the colors as well. On the left next to the number of the track, you can click this and then select another color from the palette. So I can just tell that this orange right here is too similar to my acoustic guitars. I'm gonna go with a darker orange and do the same thing with this Rhodes down here. 
select a darker orange there. And there you have it. So I hope this has helped you out. For more PreSonus Studio One tutorials and tips, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, helps support the channel, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.